Hello everyone, this is Amy Astro, back this week with a new video just for you. Um, I decided to go back and re-record a video from the very beginning um, because in the last few years, like many of you, we have updated our style and our preferences of how we like to do things. So this week I thought I'd show you how I set up a template file or a template project today. So let's jump over to the computer. current version of PixInsight, which today is 1.8.8-9. Um, that's the recent copy that I have uploaded. But what I wanted to show you is how I go about creating a, a template project that I open up every time and everything is right there in the open ready for me to use. So let's think about the processes that we use while we're editing an image. Now I'm going to go up here to the process pull down menu and I can go hunt for everything in all these little sub menus or I'm just going to go to all processes and generally I just go through top to bottom and I will open up everything that I think I will use. Automatic background extractor and everybody's going to have a different set of processes that we use so really customize this to make it work for you. All right, I'll be back as soon as I get all of these open. All right, now that I have a bunch of them open that I like to use, I'm gonna come over here and on this triangle with a line on top, which is the shade option, I'm gonna shade all of these that I have open so they're just minimized into a thumbnail. Here we go, now I've got a huge mess on my screen. And then we just go ahead and organize them. I like to organize them about in the order that I use them or similar processes. And I drag them over here to this other side of the yellow line just to keep up with them. And if you accidentally close one, it's no big deal. Just go back up to the top and open it back up. All right, now that everything is over on the right hand side, the next time that I want to go use it, all I have to do is expand it and make my changes and apply the changes. Let me take this just one step further. Let's go to multi scale linear transform. This is one, it's a process that I use a lot. And it involves a lot of manipulation as far as changing numbers and stuff. So I like to create several different versions of this one process. And let me walk you through what I do. All right, the first time that I use this process is when I'm dealing with noise reduction. So let me show you the settings that I like for my first pass noise reduction. And that is going to noise reduction here. I'm gonna take the threshold up to four, the amount at 0.5. Iterations will be three, okay, and it'll be the RGB, and I like that. Let's go to number two, come on, there we go. This will be 2.5, and then this will be two. Let's go to the third layer. This will be 1.5, and this will be two. And let's go to the fourth layer and make this 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and one. All right, so this is what I would do for the first time dealing with noise reduction. And I wanna save this as a preset. So you see this little triangle here, this stands for new instance. So I'm gonna click, drag, drop, and now it's a new instance of the multi-scale linear transform. And let's go ahead and minimize this. And notice it went right back to where I had gotten it from. But process one does not say anything to me. I need to identify this. So let's go right mouse click and come down to set icon identifier. And let's call this MLT for multi-scale linear transform. 
under bar, and this is going to be my noise reduction NR1. Okay. And I will say OK. So if I double click on it, it brings up my settings for noise reduction two, 1. Well, what about noise reduction 2? I don't want to go through this all over again. So let me modify my parameters for the second time that I use it. Let's change this to 3. And we'll change that to 2. Second layer will stay the same. Third layer, let's drop this down to one iteration. And fourth layer will stay the same. All right, so let's grab another new instance and drag, drop, let go. And let's give it an identifier. Right mouse click, set icon identifier. Let's call it MLT underbar noise reduction. Two. Oh, two. There we go. And we'll say OK. And I'm going to minimize this. So now I have two versions of multi scale linear transform. I've got the first one, which comes up with my first set of parameters. If I click on the second one, it changed things slightly and came up with my second set of parameters. So I'm going to minimize this. And see, now I can just drag it. And let's just put this over here. So instead of retyping everything again, I've got them right here. Now let me give myself a little bit more space here. Now, sometimes I use this for, let's see, sometimes I use this for um, desaturating the background when I have a mask on it. So let's do a reset. And let's go ahead and add eight layers. Yeah, eight layers sounds good. And we're going to take this detailed on layer five. And we're going to make it minus one, which is desaturating. All right. We're going to change the target to chromians. And those would be my settings for desaturation. Let's grab new instant, drag, drop, let go and right mouse click on it and let's set icon identifier. This is going to be my MLT DSAT for desaturation. I'm going to say OK. Minimize this. Now let's make sure we change things here. Let's look at what noise reduction one looks like. That's it. It's on RGB. Now let's see what desaturation looks like. There we go. Those are all negative one and we're on the chromians. See how sweet that is? Now there are several processes that you can do this to so you don't have to type everything over and over again. Okay. So you can do this little shortcut on multiple things, not just multi-scale linear transformation, but you can do it on your different mask settings, on your, um, your image calibration settings. Uh, you can set up a whole setup for um, calibrating your dark files and then a new instance for calibrating your light files and then calibrating your flat files. Now, even though you set up a new instance for something does not mean you have to stick with those parameters. You can always change them anytime you want. OK, but let's go to the next step, which is we want to save this as a new project. All right. So the next step we need to do is to turn this into a template project that we can use over and over again. So come over here to File, Save Project. Let's give the project a name. I set this up basically for my one shot color, color images. So I'll say OSC for one shot color template project. And the author is going to be me, Amy Astro. And my description for this is going to be template project. Now don't forget to come over here to this folder and give it a directory name of where you want to save it. I'm going to put this on my desktop and hit save and say OK. Well, now that that's saved, let's close out of PixInsight. Let's open it up again. Here we go. It's opening. And notice I have a blank screen. Let's get that template project back so we can use it. Go to File, Load Project, and under my desktop, let's go to OSC template project we just created and say open. And it is opening up all those shortcuts that we just put in here. 
Now you can add and subtract shortcuts anytime you want, just resave your file. And if we open it back up, there's our settings just like we expected. All our processes are here ready for us to use. So the first thing you want to do once you've opened up your template project so you don't mess it up for later is go to File, Save Project, and let's give it a new name. And let's just say I was doing the horse head. And we'll just call it the horse head project. And I'll change my description for later. And I'll just say horse head nebula. And that'll be my project. And I will do save as. And there I go. I am ready to start working on my project. All right, guys, so short and sweet this week. This was creating a template project. I hope this tip was helpful to you all. It definitely saves me a whole lot of time. I have multiple template projects. I've got one for mono cameras. I've got one set up for one shot color cameras and I modify them all the time until they're just right for me and they help me streamline my process. So guys, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, hit the alert bell so you know when I upload new astro related material. I appreciate every one of y'all and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Goodbye y'all.